Greetings, Mad Monster Minions! Welcome to another episode of the Mad Monster Lab. This one's on prosthetic transfers. Prosthetic transfers. You've seen them thousands of times in movies, and you didn't even notice it. That's because they blend in almost invisibly. They're fantastic, and they stay on all day. Yeah, and you can buy them. Or you can make them. They're made from an acrylic emulsion, and they're also used with water slide paper. It's a lot of chemistry and science. I'm stuck. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I wanted to get into this when we were doing cuts and lacerations, but that video went 46 minutes. Yeah. I've got a bullet hole entrance and exit. Entrance and exit. Uh, that's what she said. All right, Matt Monster Minions. Here we are with the shopping list for our prosade transfers, also known as prosthetic transfers. The first thing that we need are some prosthetic transfers. Now, we have these here. They're hard to see, so I'm going to hold up this white card behind it. This is a prosthetic transfer. It's made from prosade, thickened prosade. You can buy these pre-made or you can make them yourself. These are ones that I had made myself. I've got two of them here, so you can see them. All right. I'm actually going to take it out of a little baggie, so it's a little easier to see. That's it right there. Also, this white paper is called Tattoo Transfer Paper. It's a water slide paper that's actually used for decals and fake tattoos. But when you're buying it in the makeup shop, it's tattoo transfer paper, so they know what you're talking about. It is a blotter paper that has a water-soluble emulsion on it, and that lets the transfer come off like a decal, basically, or a tattoo transfer. Prosate, this is our adhesive of choice. It's also what the appliance is made out of, so it's great to use, fantastic stuff. Scissors, which you should have, a Sharpie, 99% alcohol, and this is a neat little doohickey top thing, dispenser, I like it. This is water in a salad sprayer. You don't have to use that, but I like it, it's neat. This is makeup sealer, actually the name brand of this one is called Final Seal from Ben I, but I buy it in big containers and put them into smaller ones for my kit. A wax paper palette. Cabo patch. This is actually prosade, but it's thickened. We might not need it, but I have it standing by just in case. It's thickened with Cabo Sil, hence the name Cabo patch. Other people call it Bondo. Um, I prefer not to use automotive car terms for my makeup supplies. Anti shine. You can use any brand. This one's called Touch Up from uh, Mayron, but it's an anti shine agent. Some neutral set powder. Various brushes. Dun, dun, dun. I also have a spatula. And then I've got like a number four, number five flat brush, a round brush, a tiny little flat brush, just some various brushes. Q tips. This is another form of alcohol activated makeup palette that um, I use. This palette's cool because it comes with kind of all the colors you need in one set. It's got all your flesh tones, it's got your effects colors, primaries, all that stuff. This one's made by Matthew Mungle. It's called Stay Colors. You could also uh, pick this up at your makeup supply place. Then I've got light paste and dark paste. The reason why these aren't called blood paste, light and dark, is because when I travel overseas, anytime you put something like blood on there, they stop you at the airport and they want to see you in the back room and give you a full cavity search. So, just light paste and dark paste. They're thick bloods, basically. For removal, I've got 244 fluid. It's a uh, silicone fluid, but it's actually the easiest thing to remove these prosade transfers with. Um, I've tried all kinds of other stuff. This one works the best. And then I also have some baby wipes that I use for removal as well. So that's pretty much it. I might use a splatter brush. We'll see when we get into the application. Let's get to it. All right, Mad Monster Minions, here we are with Giles. The master actor, once again, is gonna be the victim the model, the talent, as we call them. We're gonna be doing prosthetic transfers. These are great little things, they're quick. We're using them a lot for cuts, lacerations, wounds, bullet holes. 
And I'm going to show a bullet hole because some of you asked about the exit hole when we did that with the shotgun blast to the head. So what about the entrance? Well, actually, backyard effects had covered revealing an entrance before, but I'm going to show you another way to do it. And I'm going with a, a big hole. We're going to go with like shotgun slug size hole. Now, you can buy these pre-made or you can make them yourselves. Eventually down the road, I'll get into how to make them. But that's a lesson that needs to be further down the road after we've gone over silicone block molds, things like that. This is the prosthetic transfer on a silicone coated acetate. We need to get this onto the transfer paper in order to transfer it onto jazz. But there are a couple things that I'd like to do first. Number one is prepare his hair. We're just gonna clip it out of the way. We're gonna say he got shot over in the temple area here. We'll just take a little hair clip. Put that one back there. Put it on here. And just make sure this area is free of any hair or anything else. I do also want to cleanse his skin with a little bit of alcohol. Whenever I say alcohol, I'm talking 99% alcohol. That's all I ever drink. I mean use. All right, here we go. Close your eyes, please. Sir. Strong stuff. And basically, this just removes excess oil from the area that I want to work. Now, when these are packed and stored, they come with a little bit of powder on them. Um, and I powder them when I make them. I want to remove the excess powder. I'm going to do that with alcohol and a Q-tip. So very lightly, I just clean off excess powder. Now, I need the transfer paper. Very important. One side of this transfer paper is shiny. One side is not. The shiny side has the water activated emulsion on there, which is a release agent, which allows the prosthetic transfer to slide off. It's also called water slide paper for decals. Same stuff. I want one about the size of my transfer. So I'm gonna cut this. I buy it in bulk, big eight by 10 sheets. So I have a square. Now this is the funny part. I wanna make sure it's about the right size, that's good. We're gonna be laying it upside down on the transfer paper. This is why they don't come pre-set up because they are actually squished down upside down and the prosthetic transfer would flatten out. So you do it right before you apply the transfer. Now the transfer is made out of prosade. Sometimes you'll hear them refer to as prosade transfers because they're made out of prosade. Thickened prosade. We're going to take another q-tip, a tiny bit of prosade, and very lightly go over the entire prosthetic and out to the edge a little bit. Now another reason why I clean off the prosthetic with a little bit of alcohol ahead of time is because there might be some release agent on there if you use the release agent in your mold making process. So it's always good just to clean it off very quickly with a little bit of alcohol. I'm actually letting this air dry now. You can also blow dry it to accelerate the dry time, but that's pretty good. Now I want to make sure, once again, shiny side up, I'm going to go ahead and lay this down and place this onto the center lightly. Now it's stuck. I want to push down the edges and I kind of work out gently. I'm not trying to squish the prostate transfer. Now, more firmly, I'm going to really press these edges and this blending area in. I'll even press kind of firmly down in the middle of it. But when I say I'm pressing, I'm pressing hard now, really getting those edges down. I want those to stick. I also know that I'm going to be applying the transfer like this onto Giles' face. I can't see the prosthetic through there. So what I'm going to do is actually trace it. And if you guys see right there, you can see through the light. And we can kind of see right through there. I'm going to trace the prosthetic. I'm going to do the inside circle. Right there. And around the blending edge. You don't have to do a dotted line. I'm just doing that to show what is the prosthetic. Also, if you have one that is direction specific, then 
If it's direction specific, then you can go ahead and make sure that you have the right end up. At this point in time, I like to trim off the excess material. So I use my scissors. I'll flip it over like so. And just kind of trim off what I don't need. I go a little bit past the prosthetic, so I have a little bit of that blending area. Cool. And you see, that's all the excess there. On there, and you can see through there, just like that. And then here's our actual prosthetic. I'm going to prepare a little bit, and I'm going to get a paper towel. And I've got my water spritzer that I'm going to pump up a little bit, make sure it's working. Good. And I'm all set. Now, very carefully here, I'm pinching this down just to make sure that all my blending edges and everything are stuck. Lift the acetate. It's difficult, especially after all that coffee. And it leaves the prosthetic onto the transfer paper. Now, the trick is to press this on a Giles head. So I'm going to find out right there where I want it. I've got my lines. I'm going to come in here and we'll tilt your head just a little bit this way down. And we'll press this. And I'm going to put my head on the other side of his hand on the other side of his head. I'm going to press firmly. This is where the water comes into play. Take a little bit of water. And I'm just going to mist that. And I'm also going to spray the paper towel so it's wet. At this point in time, I'm going to take this and I'm going to press firmly. Not so, I don't want to hurt Giles, but I also want to saturate this blotter paper. I want the water to absorb through. And I'm going to let that just sit there for a moment, let the water do its thing. What's happening is that water slide paper emulsion is actually reactivating. It's getting wet and slippery and slidey. And those are technical terms. Look it up. And it's just going to slide right off. Now I can go ahead and check this. There we go. And now we peel this off. And you can see how that prosthetic transfer right there is right on there. Any little edges that are left up, I take the wet tissue and I press it down. One of the cool things is the uh, transfer is translucent. It's not an opaque color. So it blends in nicely with Giles' skin. The other thing is there's a little bit of that water slide release still left on the prosthetic. I want to remove that just with a little extra water. So there it is, just applied. Now it's stuck on. It's really stuck on well. In fact, it can be difficult to get off. It's a fantastic new way of doing these. And um, it'll move with the skin. It's flexible. Go ahead, yep, see. Boom, boom, boom. Now we're going to blend off the edges a little bit. This is one of the things I love about this. It's using some alcohol. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, Giles, just in case. Not too much. I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to blend off. If you look very closely, you can actually see a little bit of that edge roll off. I don't like to powder these if I don't have to. So I actually use a plastic sealer and I spray that on. Now what that does, because it's sticky, it's going to spray on and give it a little plastic coating. And it will also help even out the surface between Giles' skin and the prosthetic. Now, if there was a huge texture difference, like say the prosthetic that you had had a ton of texture, but you wanted to put it on a smooth area of Giles, like Giles has a very smooth forehead, nice and clean, very youthful Giles. Actually, this. he's got great skin. Um, you would want to add some texture to his skin to help blend the two together. And that's when I would use the Cabo patch. And just a little, it's like a thickened prostate. It's like a paste, really, you can see, about the consistency of toothpaste. And you stipple that on with a uh, sponge, and you can smooth it out with water too. But now that's on there, I'm going to spray him with the sealer. This is final seal. It's got a bit of a minty thing. I'm going to cover his eye completely because we don't need to spray his eye. And one, two, three. It's got a nice minty kind of quality. I'm sure Giles can attest to that. Oh yeah, a little mentholy. But what that does is it makes sure that that surface is not sticky and it helps blend his skin into that as far as 
the surface tension, and the reflection of light. Now, a couple things. This is a big-ass bullet hole. It's a little kind of comical size, but it demonstrates the purpose. We want to add color. Because it's translucent, I don't want to add too much color. Too much color would make it opaque. Now, the difference here is there's transparent, which is like glass. There's translucent, which is like milky water. And then there's opaque, which is like white poster board. So we don't want to take away from the translucent kind of milky water look where you can see into but not through and cover it up and make it opaque. So we just want to add as little color as possible. Also, we have to think about what's going on here. There's been severe trauma to the skin. Now, what happens with severe trauma? Well, there's usually redness that occurs because of an impact or a trauma and blood rushing to the area. There's burst capillaries. So I'm going to use a little red, but I'm going to err on the light side and go with a little pink first. Now, the skin tone, as you can see, is kind of cool. It's a little bit lighter, and I might use that to my advantage as a highlight. But I'm going to use a little bit of this pink color here, and I'm going to thin it out like a watercolor almost, so it's very thin. And using dots of color, I'm just going to add some dots. And you're going to see how this will help blend in to Giles' skin. And you see how that already helps to blend in. The other thing that I see that it needs is just a tiny bit of yellow. And matching skin tones is kind of an art all to itself. It takes a little practice to get it down. But once you do, you get it. But it does take a little bit of practice. A little too much yellow, so I've had it with my finger. Now notice I work in dots because skin is organic and it's kind of blotchy, not always even, and especially if there's trauma to an area, it becomes even more blotchy. Now see how that blends in, how little work that is. That's really blended in well, right? Now. Blended in well. I need some trauma area affected to the inside of this wound as well. I'm going to stay with the same pink. And come in here. Because I'm going to jazz it up with some nastiness later. But let's say it wasn't a bullet hole. Let's say it was another type of wound or a burn. I'll just show you how that works there. These are alcohol activated makeups. And then I'll put a little extra redness just along the edge of this wound. The lip, shall we say. A little redness. Looking good. I like it. So you can see that now I'm going to go ahead and darken this, make it look more like a bullet hole. If that was a healed wound or a burn or something like that, you can see how that would work. So I'm going to go in with a deeper red. I'm lazy, I'm feeling like switching brushes. There's a little blood red color. I'm going to show you a trick that I love about alcohol activated makeups. In fact, I'm going to mess this up on purpose a little bit, just so you can see. I'm going to go over the edge of where I want to go and be kind of sloppy with it. So I did that on purpose. Why would I ever do that? I'll show you why. One of the cool things about alcohol activated makeup is you can remove it with alcohol as well. Remember how I said I liked the color of the prosthetic that was a little bit lighter than Giles' skin, so that we could use it later, and I'm going to use it now as a highlight. And I'm just using alcohol and Q-tip and removing that. And one of the cool things is, you can see it automatically created a little natural highlight right there. So it gave us a lip-like look, sucked it in. Now I want to deepen it a little bit. I'm going to put a little black in there. And a little deeper. And mix that in with some of that red that we have so it doesn't look painted black. And I'm going to put a drop shadow at the top. That's okay, right there. So it's a little darker on the top than it is down towards the bottom. Yeah, a little more red just because I like it. Cool. And there we have it. Now, the one thing that it does need is it's a little shiny. So this is where we need the anti shine. The anti shine comes in. A little of this out. You can use a sponge or a brush. I'm using my finger, which you should never do, and I guess I should say that. But I'm old school. I come from the theater. 
And we used to do entire makeup jobs with our fingers. And you see, that took away the shine. I didn't take away the shine inside the hole. But go ahead and move around, Giles. How does it feel? Is it uncomfortable? No, it's just fine. Yeah, it feels just fine. So there you have a prosthetic transfer, bullet hole, but let's jazz this up and we're gonna make it juicy with some blood. I love this. Now, let's say you were in a hurry and you didn't have time to do all that coloration. Because that appliance was so close to Giles' skin already, you could just go in, I'm gonna use this spatula, with a little bit of blood paste, put the prosthetic on, put the blood paste in here, and then go ahead and just put that in. And then the fun part is, you take a little bit of water, it goes, oh, it pumps up with this, you don't shake it, duh. I'm not too bright. Anyway, I'm gonna close this here, and we're just gonna spritz that blood paste, and I'm gonna rub it with my finger a little bit, and we'll rub that down, right there. And I can even rub it around the edge, you see? And look at that, nasty gaping bullet wound. Ah, you don't look so good, man. <laughs> All right, so we got it on, we got to get it off. Being a makeup artist or if you're popular or whatever, you usually have to clean up your own mess. It's just the way it is, no matter what you're doing, even filmmaking, you got to go get the lights and the camera and pack it up. Not enough people spend enough time talking about this and these can be actually very difficult to remove. So I want to go over it with you guys. Once again, we back to the hair first and we're going to kind of work in reverse order of the way we put it on. I always like to take off the blood first because the blood comes off with water and it can actually believe it or not the blood can interfere with removing some of the other stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down with some water and we're gonna remove the blood now just so you guys know when I say these can stay on really well I had one on me in India for seven days and eight showers. And you're like, Rallis, why the hell would you have one on you for seven days in eight showers? I just had to know. You know, you gotta test this stuff out on yourself so you know what's going on. But you can see even cleaning that up with blood, you could go ahead and do another take, bloody it up, do another take, repaint, you know. It's great for tons of uses. So now, isopropyl mirror state is one of the removers that we use most often to remove makeup and adhesives, including prostate. And I like to use it myself, because it's fairly gentle on the skin. Um, I have sensitive skin, and I don't react to it as much as I do some other removers. Um, but it doesn't really work fantastic on these. It does after you get it off. But we have to use sometimes what's known as the Miracle Fluid 244 fluid. It's a silicone fluid. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in the cap there. Doesn't take much. Now, it doesn't dissolve the prosthetic. In fact, nothing really does. But what it does is it kind of gets under it and lets you roll it off. So the trick is to use more remover. Always don't skimp on the remover. It's what you really want to use the most of instead of elbow grease or rubbing or cloths or whatever. Use more remover when in doubt. You know, they'll make more, don't worry. But the cool thing is it just kind of rolls it off. And you can see this rolling down. It makes it so much easier than what we were trying to, you know, dealing with before. Um, another makeup artist friend told me about this, and um, I've been using it ever since. And you see how it comes off real easy? I would spend half hour, 20 minutes with other removers trying to just scrub this off. Mm. And there we go. Ah, look at that. So I go through. And I let the area soak a little bit and then give it a gentle rub. And you see it starts to come off. Fantastic. Thank you, Giles. Hey, Mad Monster Lab Minions. Rallis Khan here. And I just want to tell you guys that Friends Beauty Supply is where we get most of our materials for the Mad Monster Lab. And you can too. In fact, you can visit them in North Hollywood at their store. Or you can go to this link here, help them out. Show them that you love the Mad Monster Lab because they love us and we just want to give it back to them.
And that's it, your prosthetic transfers. Now, Rallis, you mentioned that uh, these can be used for more than just wounds. Sure, they were originally developed as a tattoo transfer for fake tattoos for film and stuff. They're called Tinsley transfers, and actually Christian Tinsley, I gotta give a nod to him, he's the man that invented this technique and this procedure. So props out to you. Yeah. So if you guys like this episode, leave a comment below and tell us what you thought. And don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, and watch these videos right here. More episodes. And again, if you have any questions about the build, this one specific, just tweet at Mad Monster Lab or at Rallis Connor.